In this video, I'm going to show you how to prove that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So glance at this acronym, CPCTC. This stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That means that once we have already proven that two triangles are congruent, we can pick any pair of corresponding parts and say that they are also specifically congruent, and the reason will always be CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But let's take it from the beginning. For problem number three, we are given that segment AC is congruent to segment AR. Let's go ahead and mark that. So segment AC is congruent to segment AR. In addition, we are given that angle L is congruent to angle S. So here's angle L and here's angle S. And uh, then we are told that angle LAC, so here's LAC, is congruent to angle SAR. SAR is right here. So that is not given. How do we know that these angles are congruent? Hopefully you can see that these are vertical angles. So the reason is vertical angles are congruent. And we will abbreviate that as vertical angles are congruent. This is actually enough information for us to prove that the triangle on the left is congruent to the triangle on the right. These triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. All right, we have two pairs of angles that are congruent, and then we have a pair of sides that, that is also congruent. Notice that the side is not between the two angles. That's how we know it is angle, angle, side instead of angle, side, angle. Okay, so in previous proofs, this is where we would have stopped because all the proofs that we have done before today, we were simply trying to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So everything we've done so far should look familiar. But once you have proven that the triangles are congruent, you can go one step further and uh, pick any pair of congruent parts. Uh, well, any pair of corresponding parts. So for example, they have chosen angle C and angle R. So angle C and angle R are corresponding parts. So they are automatically congruent because, as you know, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So now that we know that we have congruent triangles, we know the corresponding parts are congruent. For the reason, simply write CPCTC. So in summary, when you are trying to prove that a specific pair of parts are congruent, first prove that the triangles are congruent as usual. And then just stick on this one extra step where you name the corresponding parts and say that they are congruent by CPCTC. So it's the, the usual proof with one extra step. Okay, so let's do the same thing for problem number four. Notice that we are not being asked to prove that the triangles are congruent. We are asked to prove that these corresponding parts, LO and NM, are congruent. But in order to prove those corresponding parts are congruent, first we will prove the triangle is congruent as usual. We are given that angle NLM NLM is right here. This is congruent to angle LNO. LNO is right here. That's given. We are also given that angle OLN, so OLN, that's right here, is congruent to angle MNL. MNL is right here. So that's the given. We need one additional congruence statement 
in order to prove that the triangles are congruent. We've used up the given. Is there anything that we can mark automatically? Hopefully you see the shared side right here. This will always be congruent. So we can go ahead and write LN, well segment LN is congruent to segment LN. The shared side, of course, will be congruent to itself. Whenever you say that something is congruent to itself, the reason will be the reflexive property. Now we are ready to say that triangle LMN is congruent to triangle Okay, we have to be careful about the order in which we write the letters, though. So, let's see. Triangle LMN, that's this triangle. So, I'm going to make this a yellow triangle. Okay, so this is the yellow triangle. Now, we are to write the white triangle. But they started with angle L. Yellow angle L has a single mark. Now look at the white triangle. Angle N has the single mark. That means L corresponds with N, so I'm going to put N first. Next, they put angle M. Yellow angle M is the one that has no mark. That's going to correspond with white angle O. So I have N, O, so that just leaves L. Okay, these triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. I see that we have two angles and a side. But not only that, but I see that the side is between the two angles. That's how you know that it is angle, side, angle, instead of angle, angle, side. All right? It'll be angle, angle, side if the side is not between the two angles. So that was the regular proof where we prove the triangles are congruent. Now it's time to add this extra statement where we say um, that another pair of corresponding parts are congruent. So here they're talking about uh, segment LO and MN. We've already proven the triangles are congruent. That's over. Now, we can say that these additional corresponding parts are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So just stick on that extra step and put CPCTC. All right, let's look at one more. All right, so this one's completely blank, so we have to do a little bit, bit of extra work ourselves. Let us start with the given. We are given that segment AC is congruent to segment BC. So let's just write that down. Segment AC is congruent to segment BC. So of course the reason for that will be given. But let's be sure to mark it on the picture. So segment AC is congruent to segment BC. We are given one more fact. All right, I'm going to change the color, though. Um, we are told that X, uh, I better write a little smaller. X is the midpoint of segment AB. So X is the midpoint of segment AB. Okay, this is also given. This is not a congruence statement. When they give us something that is not a congruence statement, you want to turn it into a congruence statement as fast as you can. So how can I turn this into a congruence statement? Well, if X is the midpoint, of segment AB. First of all, here's segment AB right here. If X is the midpoint, that means the left side is congruent to the right side. In other words, segment AX is congruent to segment XB. 
What will the reason be? If you want to know the reason that goes here, very often you will find a hint in the previous statement here. In other words, look diagonally back at the previous statement for a clue. Notice that the key word is midpoint. So that's why the reason is going to be definition of midpoint. If the previous statement had said something about bisector, right now I'd be talking about definition of bisector, either definition of segment bisector or definition of angle bisector. But they said midpoint, so it's definition of midpoint. We still don't have enough information to prove the triangles are congruent. We only have two pairs of congruent parts. We need a third pair. We've used up the given though, so we have to look for something that we can mark automatically. This came up a minute, a minute ago. We have the shared side, and we can go ahead and just write segment XC is congruent to segment XC. The shared side is congruent to itself. And whenever you do that, the reason is the reflexive property. The reflexive property. That gives us enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent. So I can go ahead and say triangle AXC is congruent to triangle BXC. The reason will be side, 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 because you can tell that all three sides are marked. So that was a normal proof proving that the triangles are congruent. However, be careful. That is not what they asked us to prove. If right here they said prove triangle AXC is congruent to triangle BXC, I'd be done. But that's not what they asked me to prove. They asked me to prove that angle ACX, okay, that's this angle up here at the top, prove that that's congruent to another angle. Well, first of all, the corresponding angle will be right here. So ACX corresponds with angle BCX. So that's definitely what we are trying to prove. But that is going to require this extra statement that we're going to stick on the end. So we can now say angle ACX is congruent to angle BCX. And the reason will be CPCTC. Once we have already proven that the triangles are congruent, we can go on to say any pair of corresponding parts will also be congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent.